Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Elder Scrolls Lore. Now before we begin today, I'd like to take a shout out to Ares' channel. Feel free to check it out in the link in the description below. Uh, it takes it right to the channel. It's beautiful music. I highly, highly, highly recommend you check it out. And then uh, feel free to also join the Discord chat with the link in the description below or in the channel header. Um, with not too much else, let's hop into it. We don't have too much news. Um, Elder Scrolls Lore, or not Elder Scrolls, Dragon Age Lore will be... Um, kind of being postponed until I can get more on a regular schedule because I'm in the process of moving. So there's that. But with that, today we're going to be talking about the Kingdom of Wayrest. Wayrest is one of the eight major kingdoms of the province of High Rock and is the capital of the Stormhaven region. And Wayrest is also the seat of power for the Kingdom of Wayrest, the city itself that being. And Wayrest is a bustling river city that heavily thrives upon the Bulsay River, which meets its uh, which meets the, its end at the Iliac Bay. The people have gone to appreciate their past as their dynasties have left their individual marks throughout history. Now, traditionally, we'd also go into the geography and the layout of the city. We're going to skip that because I feel like that's just kind of things we don't really need to know uh if you guys did appreciate that part of the videos please let me know and I'll, I'll continue to add them along but i feel like that's something that most people don't really care for in a way i think people more care about the history and the lore that goes behind certain cities and uh regions so with that we're gonna just hop right into the history so with the foundation of the wayrest kingdom and the siege of orsinium is they go hand in hand. So the foundation of Wayrest remains to be an enigma to this day, and it started as a humble fishing village where the Bielsa River meets the Iliac Bay. Sometime around 800 of the First Era, though, the Denzians of Wayrest were cons constantly harassed by the Orzmer of the nearby city of Orsinium. Orcish raiders consisted of members of Clan Bakrak, and the Bielsa raids were orchestrated by Clan Agron and was considered to be the catalyst to the eventual siege of Orsinium. In 948 of the First Era, King Joldi of Daggerfall sent an important letter to Gaiden Sinji, leader of the Order of Diagna, and about the recent raids as well as the Orsinium's uh, the city of Orsinium's recent growth. Several years in, the uh, the year of 980 of the First Era, King Jolie and Gaiden Sinji advanced into the Rothgar for the Siege of Orsinium. After the battle, Wayrest began to flourish and became a kingdom among the Iliac Bay. Many traveling from Bankurai and Rothgar had to travel through the Eastern Bielse and Wayrest, making the village a welcome rest, hence the name. Now, Wayrest in the Kingdom of Daggerfall and Sentinel established the Masaconian Tradeway, a trading system across the Iliac that established strong relations across the sea. Now, in the year 1100 of the First Era, the Kingdom of Wayrest was, a fully, was fully established under the leadership of the Gardner dynasty, with their ruler being Ferangel Gardner. Now, the Gardners were a wealthy family that had established themselves before the Siege of Orsinium. Gardner Castle was built upon uh, this, uh, built on High Rock alongside the Biose, and the small businesses were created within the walls. Ferengel Gardner was officially proca proclaimed King of Wayrest when the settlement began to accept ambassadors from the Camoran dynasty. The Kingdom of Wayrest was created along the Iliac Bay at officially 1100 of the First Era, and the members of the Gardner family were involved in the Siege of Orsinium, making it part of the Court of Daggerfall under Jolie. Ever since the Battle of Grand Dentour, the Kingdoms of High Rock were at relative peace with one another, and the Way city of Wayrest was still under the leadership of the Gardner dynasty. Now, King Gardner had ruled Wayrest along with the other merchant families of House Cumberland and House Horley. Around this time of 541 in the Second Era, Durkorak, the Black Drake of the Western Reach, invaded the kingdoms of High Rock in an attempt to take control of the province. The Black Drake's invasion had assaulted the Bankoi region and the city of Evermore, moving southwards towards the, the city of Halin Stand and continued to the Bielse and Stor Stormhaven. The, Dens the Densians of Alcair, Manver uh, Menvia, and Gelvodun had fled the city had fled to the city of Wayrest to escape the constant raids along the Rothgarian Mountains, and eventually the Black Drake had arrived to the outskirts of the city and commenced the siege of Wayrest. Now the siege of Wayrest lasted lasted for 57 days, with the which is approximately two months, and the Reachmen lacked any substantial weaponry that were able to breach the city. They had no siege weapons to break the outer walls of the Maneva front, and they had no warships to create a blockade onto Wayrest. 
The attack was merely a diversion so that the Black Drake could take the cities of Glenumbra, more specifically the city of Daggerfall. King Gardner tasked Emmerich of House Cumberland to lead a Waywrester armada to the city of Daggerfall to aid the Denzians of the city and defeat the Black Drake. King Bergamot of Daggerfall led a defensive force consisting of Daggerfall's finest in the Knights of Dragon. A Knights of the Dragon, I should say. Emmerich advanced into Denia, uh, into the Denia Forest with an army of heavy dragoons, and the Battle of Daggerfall began. It was fought on two fronts and was eventually resolved when Emmerich killed Dukorak with his steel sword. Hyrock was quickly overwhelmed uh, by an army of barbarians from the east and needed to come together to fight against any future threats that may come in the harm of the Denzians of Bretigny. The kingdoms of Wayrest, Daggerfall, Evermore, Camlorn, and Shornhelm banded together to form the first iteration of the Dragon or the Daggerfall Covenant. I don't know why I said dragon there. So the Daggerfall Covenant had the potential to be so much more, something that goes beyond Greater Bettany and even the Iliac Bay as a whole. This was Emmerich's goal, and he became the King of Wayrest in 563 of the Second Era after his bravery against Dukorak the Black Drake and the death of the Gardner dynasty from the Connaughton flu in 560 of the Second Era. Emmerich was thinking about a queen, someone to rule alongside him in Wayrest, and initially Emmerich was given the choice of Princess Riella, the Princess of Shornhelm, and the daughter of King Rancer uh, Bank Brank Branquette. Sorry, I don't know why I had so much trouble saying that. I get my one. I always have more than one, but I get my one. <laughs> Rancis Bukorat was notorious among the kings of High Rock when he fought for the title of, of King of Rivenspire from his younger brother. Now, Rancer was ruthless and very stubborn, capable of very atrocious things, and Emmerich was about to marry Rael had he not traveled to the city of Sentinel and met Princess Maria, Mar Maria sorry, daughter of King Farajad, and <laughs> told you I get more than I usually mess up more than once, but whatever. Emmerich married Maria in the spring of 566 of the Second Era and established the Greater Daggerfall Covenant, with the province of Hammerfell now being uh, assimilated into the in the new pact. Rancer was furious that his daughter was denied by a red guard, and he withdrew his ambassador from Moiras, and he did not attend the wedding. A storm was brewing in Rivenspire, and the war was in the air. The year of 566 of the Second Era was the beginning of King Rancer's civil war. Now, King Rancer assembled the three great houses of Rivenspire to attack the city of Wayrest, and subsequently the Daggerfall Covenant. The houses of Durrell, Montclair, and Tamrith joined together alongside Rancer and Shornhelm against the Daggerfall Covenant. While initially Baron Montclair tried to become a neutral envoy in the Civil War, his knights would eventually join King Rancer's side in the assault of Wayrest. His armies moved across the, all of High Rock to eventually arrive at the outskirts and lay siege to Wayrest. Now the Shornhelm Guard were swarming the gates of Wayrest while the local militia were holding them back. Eventually, Emmerich and his Cumberland Guard would fight off the Old Gate Lancers from the fortress of Old Gate and use his enchanted broadsword to push back any resistance. Rancer was defeated at the Battle of Carthwaste and Moor when he was killed by General Dathieu after the constant conflict. Emmerich had sent an ambassador named Zephyrine Frey to King Karag Robrakrak, leader of the Orcs, and Frey had traveled with Karag for several months and was present with him when he attempted to move to Falkreath Hold and establish the new iteration of, Yasna of Yashnag's chiefdom. Frey told Karag about Rancer's war and that he needed help to defeat him. Karag and his militia of Orcs would then go on to defeat Rancer's army at Mark Waste and Moor, and after the conflict, Emmerich embraced the Karag or Karag's Brothgar and made them part of the Daggerfall Covenant. The Covenant had become an incredibly powerful force that rivaled even that of the Bremen Empire and would soon become part of the uh, one of the alliances to fight in the Three Banners War. Now, during the Interregnum of 582 of the Second Era, the city of Wayrest had become the capital of the Daggerfall Covenant, with King Emmerich still at the at the helm with his wife, Queen Maria of Sentinel. Now, at this time, a group of Daedra worshippers called the Supernal Dreamers, who worshipped Vermina, the Daedra Prince of Dreams and Nightmares, had come into conflict with the Daggerfall Covenant, and basically it took that of the Vestige. I, I realize this whole time I've been saying Vestige, it's Vestige, I'm pretty sure it is. And he is an agent of Emmerich who came in to the, help the Covenant and eventually drove back any of Vermina's agents and would defeat the cult itself. And it would also actually save Emmerich from her influence, and Emmerich continued to rule the Daggerfall Covenant and Wayrest. 
Now, High King Emmerich would bring upon a new dynasty of kings into Wayrest called the Cumberland Dynasty. This dynasty would last several years into the Interregnum and would leave a mark on the history of the Western world. The central square of Wayrest would be named the Cumberland Square in honor of Emmerich and his descendants. The Cumberlands would eventually fall and a new dynasty would take its place in the kingdom, but not much is known about the Horley Dynasty, but they left a significant mark on the province by, to be mentioned in history. Like the Gardeners and the Cumberlands before, none of the Horley leaders would be assassinated by rival politicians, and the Horleys eventually would be dissolved of their power, and the Septon dynasty would take control of Wayrest. This occurred when the province of High Rock was integrated into the Septum Empire when Tiber Septum became Emperor of Tamriel and united the provinces in 896 of the Second Era. Uh, yeah, I'm right on that, I almost said third. Now, in 119 of the Third Era, the Septim Empire had control over Wayrest, and many Septim leaders would come from Wayrest and other cities like Solitude or Ebonheart. Now, one of these leaders was Thoris Pelagius Septim, more and more no commonly known as Pelagius III or Pelagius the Mad, and Pelagius was the son of Magnus Septim, the king of Limoth, and the emperor after Sepphoris and Kintria Septim. Magnus and Pelagius were present at the Siege of Solitude, the final conflict in the War of the Red Diamond, and Pelagius was given a strange am amulet from an elderly woman that welled a soul gem with the spirit of a deranged werewolf demon. The amulet had a serious effect on Pelagius that drove him to insanity, and Pelagius was the son of Magnus and Ustalia Dreni of Belfuria, and Pelagius III would eventually become the King of Solitude, and Potema Septum. Uh, after Potemus Septum and the Emperor of Tamriel. He would marry Katria Rathim of Ebonheart, resulting in Katria ruling, ruling over the Empire since Pelagius was too insane to rule. He was eventually be taken to Asylum in Torval and later the Temple of Kinrith on the Isle of Betany, where he would pass away on the 34th of Last Seed in his cell on Betany. Now, basically, I won't get into Pelagius the Mad because that is a lore that is lore for a different time but so essentially we'll continue on with with Ray, way rest here so we don't lose track of what's actually going on because i will get sidetracked heavily by going into pelagius the mad so in 399 of the third era the waning years of the simulacrum uh an area nestled with uh, within the rothgarian mountains were claimed by lord bowen of Wayrest and sought out were also sought out by clan minat an orcish clan of rothgar bowen was challenged by gortwog gro nagorm for the rights of rights of the pocket realm in the mountains, both Bowen and Nagram, Nagorm had equal rights to land and papers to back it up. The only way to settle this in a civilized way rest was through a duel. The duel had Gortwag choose the equipment, while it had Bowen choose the location. The duel was to take place at Lord Berylith's Bar Bar palace in Wayrest, and they were to use orcish armor created from the finest smiths in Wayrest. Bowen initially were, was unable to move around in the orcish armor. He was trained uh, by an orcish servant by Belith named Old Tuner, who was once part of the Cursed Legion of High Rock. Eventually, Bowen mastered the armor, but ultimately lost to Gortwag, and the land was named Orsinium in honor of the orcs that came before to bring upon the dream of Orsinium again. Now, during the Warp of the West, the city of Wayrest was under the rule of King Edaware, and the old hardy leader of Wayrest had, had has been friends with several people within the Empire, notably Uriel the, uh, the Sixth. Sorry, I was like reading that real quick, and I was like, that's six, right? Not fourth. I know my normal Roman numerals, don't worry. And Symmachus, he was friends with Symmachus as well. Edoweer had recently lost his wife, King Carolina, Carolina, who passed away from her age. He also had a child with her name, Elsana. Sometime around the War of Betany, Edoweer married Baron Zaya of Mournhold, and after conspiring with her against Yagar Tharn, he had a stepchild named Helseth Halalu, who was destined to inherit the throne of Mournhold in the Dashan Plains and Morgaya. Now, Edoweer was one of the seven people to miraculously come in possession of the Totem of Tiber Septum after the Blades of Catch Castle Ludwich took the Totem from Castle Daggerfall. The event known as the Warp of the West occurred when the Agent traveled to the Mantellan Crux in the Plains of Aetherius to retrieve the Mantella and jumpstart the Numidium. After the event, the Agent was sent into a timeline causing their deaths in all timelines. 
The warp then produced several timelines to combine into a single outcome. Edelweir used his newfound power to make the Kingdom of Wayrest the one region to rule all of the Iliac. The actual result of the Kingdom of Wayrest would actually stretch across the central coast of the Iliac Bay from the northern fiefdom of Anclier and the fiefdom of Gudo Guavidon. Sorry, I'm probably butchering all of these, so forgive me there. The Kingdom of Daggerfall stretched from the northern coast of the Western Anclier to the fiefdom of ya Yaklan as well. The Iliac Bay went from 23 different regions to merely four regions of Daggerfall, Sentinel, Orsinium, and Wayrest. Now, after the Warp of the West, the Kingdom of Wayrest flourished and was at peace with the other nations of the Iliac Bay. Baron Zaya, Helseth, and Morgaya moved on from the Wayrest and traveled beyond the province. Baron Zaya and Helseth returned to the city of Mornhold, where Helseth would become the King of Morrowind, and after the death of after the death of King Athane Lethon, uh, Morgaya moved to the city of Firsthold and married King Riman uh, Caradil. Elsana inherited the throne of El of Edoweer and the firstborn child as as the firstborn child of Edoweer sorry I'm like messing myself all up here I'm getting all tongue twisted now it's great my throat's really dry I don't know why this happens every single time I try to make a video now during her reign Alcena was feared across the land had to outmaneuver Halseth who had a reputation for being cunning in his pursuits Alsana allied with Gortwag Gortwag Gronagorm and the attempt to control the in an, in an attempt to control the region she would continue her rule of over Wayrest into the Oblivion Crisis and into the Fourth Era. We don't know if she still rules today. She doesn't, actually. Never mind, I, I looked at my notes, I thought she was the last one. Nope, she's not. Now, sometime after the Great War, the Kingdom of Wayrest was ruled by King uh, Ber uh, Berenia. And his relation to Alsana is unknown, but is likely not to be related. Berenia had a shaky reign in Wayrest, and he was very anxious, and many politicians in the region wanted a change in the kingdom. The Temple of the Divines was repurposed as a Temple of Akatosh, and the Order of the Hour occupied the temple. In response of all the backlash to him, Berenia opened the ports of Wayrest to anyone coming into the Aliac Bay, and this brought Corsairs into the city and caused the invasion of Wayrest in 188 of the Fourth Era. Now, Berenia hired the Corsairs to attack Wayrest to kill his opposition, 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 and he planned to escape Wayrest via ship, but was encountered by the Dark Brotherhood. His fate is unknown, and whether he escaped or not is uh, still unknown, but the Wayrest Sanctuary was then discovered by the Corsairs, raided, and wiped out. And the only ones remaining at this point of the Dark Brotherhood chapters were the Ch ones in Chadenal and Falkreath. And that is all we have today. We have a lot of freaking history here. We have 17 minutes worth of history. I'm going to assume probably a little bit less because of the intro, but don't matter. Um, regardless of which, this was a fascinating topic to cover. I've always wanted to cover the kingdoms of High Rock, and so now I got to cover at least one of them. There's seven more. They have a lot of history to them and their kingdoms, so they're a little bit different to uh, other cities in other provinces because this is including all the history of a kingdom and uh so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed if you guys want more please like and subscribe for more content like this uh dragon age lore will become more constant and it will be a bi-weekly show once i move back home right now i'm in the process of moving and it's kind of chaotic so i'm gonna cut corners where i can right now i'm trying to see the general reception of Dragon Age lore, it seemed to be pretty positive so far, so I will pick up with that and become more consistent with that later on, and I hope to see you all in the next video. If you guys have any suggestions for future videos, let me know in the comments below, and uh, yeah, I'll see you guys around. Peace.